Welcome back everybody. I'm going to show you four tips on the new Google Sheets extension for GA4. So that's what we're going to talk about. If you have not yet subscribed, go over to lookerstudio.vip forward slash YouTube, grab the cheat sheet. It's a great time, lots of fun, and also a newsletter that goes out every single Thursday. Unsubscribe at any time. All right, let's hop into it, folks. So here in the Google Workspace Marketplace, so we're going to add on things for sheets. You'll see that there are a lot of GA4 things. Sync with seems to be one of the ones that has a lot of them, but there are GA4 add-ons, all these things. The one you're going to look for is the one that's built by Google right here. So Google Analytics add-ons, believe it or not, is not Google. And here we do have one that is by Google. I've already installed it. I installed it. I think I was like the 36th person to install it. So I'm going to call myself an early adopter. Um, if you look on that, it will give you all the things. You can do an admin install or install for just yourself. I'm in our better than data account. So I just install it for me. You can install it for if you want. If you want to install video, go watch someone else's video, but we're going to talk about how to use it um, and then come back after you watch their other video. Okay. So let's go in here to extensions. You will see here that we have the G Google Analytics 4 report builder for GA4. What you're going to do is hit create report. This is going to bring up a little side modal on the little side here. And this is very familiar with kind of universal analytics here. So let's just talk about, we have to build a report name and you're like, where does the report name go? So I'm going to call this sessionize events. All right. And here we have then the account. So I'm going to select our Looker Studio VIP account. We then have the property here. We then have the start date of what you're going to look for. I'm going to use end days ago. I'll tell you why in a second. And then we have start date of days ago. So I'm going to do one day ago. And then here is the end date uh, to yesterday. Okay. So start date is like today. And then if you do if you use these, then it will be kind of automatic there. So I'm gonna do end days ago and we are gonna hit yesterday and I'm gonna put this as 60 days ago through yesterday. And then you can select your dimensions. This is really nice here. You can search for them if you want to like do a little searchy search, but um, you can also type them in. So I want the date, right? Which is gonna be the session date. I then want the a landing page, which they now have the non-query string, big win. We then have, uh, I want the session source, um, session medium, oopsies, I just deleted something. Session medium and session campaign. And I'm gonna pull a, a wild one here and I'm gonna pull in the metrics of sessions. All right, so if I do this and I hit create report, you would expect that all your data starts getting pulled, but that's not the case. What happens here is that we create a report and it builds a master summary page here. So here's report configuration. So we open this up, you'll see that it's just these fields over here. So we've got sessionized events, that's what I called it. We then have property, we then have 60 days ago through yesterday, we then have the number of sessions or metrics. I just have sessions, but you can add whatever you want. Landing page, source, medium campaign, et cetera, et cetera. We can then add in any filters, dimensions, etc. So you can add those in uh, down here, or you can just do them here. I'm going to leave it as it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to then get rid of the limit. So Google Analytics 4 API has a 10,000 uh, row limit. So I just removed that, or I moved 1,000, and you could put in 10,000 if you want to. I will show you what happens when you run it. So now let's go up here, and you're going to go to extensions, and you're going to hit run report. It's going to take maybe five to 10 seconds. It can only pull the actual uh, number of rows. So here it will tell you the number of quota consumed, the number of tokens per quota, and the number remaining for that property. Then this is very important. Total results found and total results returned. So what we have right here is exactly one for one. It pulled all of the records that it found. We have the landing page, the source, the uh, medium, and the campaign for the last 90 days. What we don't have in here is we don't have the date. So I'm gonna add in the date in, and you can then hit, uh, hit create report again, and I'll show you what this does. So if you hit create report, you might assume it's gonna populate that same one, but actually it will open up column C, okay? So very important here is to modify that. What you can do if you want to, delete this bad boy, popity pop this one back over there and get rid of that and come up to extensions, the GA thing and run reports. It will run all of them. So let's just wait for this to be done and ta-da one report is generated it blew it all out and there's no oh there there's the data so here you can see that it's through 3300 remember 10,000 is the limit so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna add in event name and change the date to 180 days ago 
and I'm gonna hit create report and I'm gonna show you what this looks like. So it's here and if you hit run, so important fact is if you hit run, you then have two reports that are running in conjunction. So if I hit extensions and go down here and then hit run reports, ta-da, you now have things off to the races. Um, it will take twice as long to do this, so just keep that in mind if you have a lot of them here. And you have to always remember that there's a, what is it, five or 10 million cell limit in Google Sheets, which is, like honestly, it's a five million usable limit, right? So um, that's just keep that in mind. All right, this is taking a second longer than we'd like, but there we go. Okay, so now we have sheet one. And for some reason it didn't work, but here we go. Here's the point I was trying to get. So I built it built two with the exact same name. So it just modified the furthest right one and put that here. So keep that in mind there. This is one thing I wanted to show you to be aware of. So this is point number two. At point number one, I went right into about how to add this, do this whole thing. Point two is watch out for total results found and total results returned. So because we're looking for a bigger date range and I added event name, which is just something I did, um, what you'll notice is that it found 57,000 records or results and only returned 10,000. So this is something in GA4 called, or in APIs called pagination. So how do you solve for pagination? I have not figured it out in my hours playing with this. So it looks like it, you can only pull up to 10,000 rows at a time. If you over, um, if you like over hard code this and you change it to like 200,000, right? If you put limit as 200,000, I think the, the default is 100. Let's just try this out. All right, we're gonna move, get rid of these. We're gonna put this over here and put the limit as 100,000 and hit run. And so this is to show you what will happen. Um, it will return those, but it just will take a long time. So we're gonna edit this section out and here you go. So here you can see it returned the same 10,000 rows and 57,000 records that it found. It used six tokens. Uh, I think it's like one token per thing, whatever, it doesn't matter. And so there's our first problem, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust this to, like let's just say 30 days ago, which I'm gonna adjust here. So we're at 180, let's go to 60. And I've got event name, I've got date, I've got the campaign source, medium, landing page, etc. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit run here and I'm gonna, while it's doing that, we're gonna hit run reports. While it's doing that, I'm gonna open up Google Sheets, so here, or Google Looker Studio. So here in Looker Studio, I'm going to add data. Let's rename this thing up here to our GA4 Sheets demo. And we since we're using our real Looker Studio page, let's just check here. Look at that, still too many, too many records found. We're doing a demo here, so here we go. We'll just do this one last time, run that, so we can get the real data. So while we're in there, I'm gonna connect to that Google Sheets. So I'm gonna hit add data, go to Sheets, connect into Google Analytics Sheets demo to our sessionized events. And this is extremely, extremely important. Okay, so as you can see over here is the rows do not start until down here. You can edit them, you can hide them, etc. I'm gonna show you the easiest way. Um, it is using columns to suggest what you need. So hop over here. I'm gonna include specific range and we're gonna say A15 through G. Hit add. And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna go all the way down to A15 and to G and it's gonna pull those pieces of data from there. So if I add a sheet now here, you can see that it's the exact same thing. It has the date schema for the date and we are going to go. So that's point number two or three, we're on three now, is number three is you need to make sure that if you're connecting to Looker Studio is that you want to pull from A15 to whatever number of columns that you have, okay? We just pulled sessions, but I'm gonna show you point number four here, which is with Sheets, you can then do something that is really great of creating metrics from your sessions. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So because everything that we pulled is a sessionized event, meaning the landing page is tied to the session, event name is number of sessions that did that event name. So you can't just sum up here sessions. It's gonna be dramatically over inflated because it's broken down by every single event. But what we can do is we can say, I want to look at 
um, just the events that I care about, right? So let's add in something a little more fun. So if I create a new event here and I say if event name equals impression underscore lead, right? Then return sessions, else null, okay? So now what will happen is it will return, if the event name is an impression lead and it's sessions, it will return that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna call this impression underscore lead. And so now what we're doing here is we are making metrics from our events. Okay, I just hopped into it, maybe the data, data source level, so let me just show you what that looks like. So impression underscore lead is now being summed. And now what we should see, if I make this a little bit bigger for you, let's get rid of this. So now what we'll see is that if this landing page contributed to an impression, right, you will see it here. So you can then gauge really quickly of like which one is best doing at this conversion. You can use whatever conversions your heart desires, but that's what this is doing. So what we can then do is do the same thing for generate lead. So here, I'm just gonna copy the function. We're gonna add it at the data source level. And what we're gonna do is say if, event name equals generate lead, right? Then we're gonna return sessions else zero. And what we're gonna do is just so we don't make sure that we have this, we're gonna sum these up. And now let's call this our generate lead event. And, oh, I didn't save it. I do not like this, Sam I am, here we go. Generate lead. And generate lead. Okay, so now we should have this. We're gonna hit save down here and hit done. Now we should be able to add generate lead to this piece and ta-da folks. Now what we could do is say, I want to do generate lead divided by impression lead. You might have to, you'll have to sum this up. I'm not sure why, there we go. And this will then be a percentage. And now we have our conversion rate here, folks. So this is gonna be the page conversion rate. So now you have the event names there and you are off to the races. So without much effort, we were able to use Google Sheets to pull in data here. We then built a report in Looker Studio using Google Sheets and the event names in this case um, to build that report out. The bonus tip number five here is that if you want, you can have multiple of these reports and you can copy them right here. So let's just copy this over and I wanna pull 30 days ago from yesterday and I wanna pull sessions and I wanna pull, I think conversions. Let's just do sessions, event count. Yeah, event count, so there we go. And we could also do event, let's just do that. Okay, we've got those two. And then down here, instead of landing page, I want page path, right? Everything is like that. So page path, and I also don't want this. So number of pages, number of sessions, and we could also add in the number of users. Landing page, we want page path, sessions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's just make sure we have that. Page path, session source, medium campaign, date. We don't need event name. We then have down here sessions, event count, and then we'll just do total users. All right, let's see if we did it right. So now we should have another report here that is gonna be called page engagement. We're gonna hit run on this, extensions go over here. And now we should see another report at the bottom show up. And then now we can connect that in and ta-da, you will have a page level breakdown of all of your events, which is super, super sweet. And it looks like we messed up. So folks, don't do what you do I did over here. So let's just add them in here, event count. All right, I'm sure I messed up on something simple. We want page location, source, medium campaign, date. And we want page path. and sessions event count users, which is total users. We could then also add an active users. Let's just see. Here. If I hit create report, let's just blow that out. Admit that I was wrong and we'll go from here. Okay. 
So now folks, we have this up in order. We can then come up here and go to extensions, this and run report. And now it is off to the races. So the basically the idea is, is that we should be able to, oh, I didn't rename this. Um, and you should be able to have multiple pages here. Um, we're gonna have to rerun this one more time. Extensions here, run reports. And there we go. So we have a page level report and a sessionized report. This page level report now, we have all of these broken down by what people who saw the cheat sheet page from Direct None, people who saw the box water page, et cetera, et cetera. So what you should be able to do and see here is how you can maybe apply this to yourself. We've gone over some of the limitations, the 10,000 rows as being the biggest of them um, and not having the ability to have pagination for what you're creating. So guys, without further ado, that's kind of the overview here of GA4 Sheets. Hopefully it was more helpful than um, some other people, like some other tutorials out there. And it really helps you understand if this is the right tool for you and your uh, situation. So without further ado, see you in the next one.